I'm out in the garden and I want you to walk around with me while I look for something to use in the new series I want to start and that's going to be on how to make cordage which is my latest addiction with natural materials and by that I mean grasses and barks and stalks from plants and I don't know the kind of things that I might be using to make natural inks and dyes and I might be using to do some eco printing with well now I want to see can I make cordage with it so let's go see what we can find I have read that some kinds of cenothus can be used in making cordage but I'm not ready to experiment with that yet it's on my list though and this is some black sage that I, I'm not thinking it's going to be any good, but maybe down the road. Coyote brush makes some great inks and dyes, and I love it for eco printing, but it's not going to work for cordage, I'm pretty sure. Neither is my fuchsias. And these are some dogwoods and some fennel. Um, the dogwoods might be okay for baskets, but I don't... Um, I don't know, I might give it a try for cordage down the road. And some carrick sedge, which I know I can do something with. But today what I want to try is this grass. And I'm not sure what it's called. It comes up every spring here in California. It's the grass the dog usually likes to go eat. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out what it's called. I can see the little fibers on the sides. You know, if you run your hand down it backwards, you can feel, you know, how rough it is. And I've played with this a little bit and I already learned one lesson, which was a good one. But this is what I want to show you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull long stalks like this and then I'm going to let them dry. And they're going to dry for, you know, two or three days just until they get really crispy so that, you know, if you picked them up and you tried to fold them. See, like right now, I can fold it and it's going to pop right back up. But if I wait until they're dry and when I can fold it like that and they're going to break, that's when I know they're going to be ready. All right. So I'm going to pick a whole bunch of this and then I'll meet you back inside. So here's the grass that I collected out in the yard. And while I could go ahead and start and make cordage with this, I'm not gonna be very happy with it when it's done. Uh, how do I know? <laughs> I know because I tried. You know, I'm one of these people that even though I do the research, I read what you're supposed to do, and then I still have to go ahead and try and prove it for myself to see if that's really what happens. And what happens is, you know, you could go ahead and, and start, you know, grab a piece of fresh grass. You could do the little twist until it starts to twist on itself. You know, I can go ahead and do that, but what's gonna happen is this grass is going to dry out. And as the grass dries out, the starches that are in the grass are gonna evaporate. And what happens is the grass is gonna shrink. So instead of being this really nice tight cord, it's gonna loosen up. This is a piece of cordage that I started when the grass was fresh. And now that it's dried out, you can see all the spaces in there. You know, you could probably still use it to tie something up, but it's not very pretty. And for art, well, see, it's not going to work for very long. It's going to dry out and pull apart like that. It doesn't have enough um, tied back on itself, you know, to, to hold it. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to let it dry. And I'm going to let it dry to the point that it gets like this. The wonders of video, right? <laughs> And you want it so that, you know, if you break, the, if you do this, it's going to break. Okay, if you fold it now, if you take a piece of the fresh grass and you fold it, it's not going to break unless you really, you know, pinch it there and you're going to have to pull on it. So the temptation is still to use this, but don't do that. You want it this dry, but of course you can't use it when it's this dry. Now here's something interesting I want to show you about this grass. You don't see it as much when it's fresh. You can just see there's this dividing line there. But after it's dry, and I'm not a botanist, so I don't know what this is called, but you can see this white vein down the center. Let's grab one that's a little flatter. You can see maybe a little better. I want to get it to this point, but you can't use it when it's going to break as soon as you fold it, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to wrap it up in some paper towels or you're going to put it in a tub of water and let it sit in either the wet paper towels or the water. I don't know, I think I let mine sit maybe, maybe half an hour at the most, and then keep it rolled in the paper towels. You can just keep unwrapping it and pulling out something that's damp that you can work on.
So once the grass is wet enough to be pliable again, it's been rehydrated, then it's time to have some fun. I've got a few out of the paper towels and then I'm keeping the rest of the grass still wrapped in the paper towels so that it doesn't dry out because this stuff's really thin and it's gonna dry out pretty fast. And you can kind of see that vein a little better that I was talking about there. See how that is in there? So it's still damp. You can see it's still damp. I kind of just patted it dry, a little bit dry with a paper towel and that was it. So I'm gonna start with my twist and I'm holding it in my right hand and I am twisting my left hand is twisting it away from me and my right hand is twisting it toward me. And I'm going to continue to twist until it starts to twist on itself. And I let it then fold into that little loop that's gonna be the top for me. And you just keep, see, it's just, you gotta just keep twisting. And that's what you're gonna hold on to is just that little loop at the top. And then what I have learned is to make sure that I am holding very tight down there right as at the twist. If you let your finger slide up too much and you're not holding it tight as you're doing the, the, the Z twist there, it's going to, you're still gonna have some cordage, it's just not gonna be quite as snug. So I just have had to train myself now to scoop my finger down a little bit each time. And this is just something that the more you do it, like anything else, it becomes easier and easier. This part, the twist part, is a lot easier for me now. The splicing, uh, joining of one piece of grass to another, I'm still not real good at that. But, you know, that's another thing. I just need to practice more and more. And I will be honest with you guys. You know, I wanted to actually just come on and just show you the finished cordage because there are so many people, there's survivalists, there are people that, you know, are out there all the time doing this sort of thing. And they, they're experts at that sort of stuff. They know a lot more than I do about this. And I don't know, it was a little bit scary to think about showing you what I was doing with the cordage. Showing my process of doing stuff is always scary for me because I don't feel like I'm an expert at anything. But then if I showed you just an expert's way of doing it, you might be too afraid to try it. And I don't want anybody to be afraid to try and do something that interests them when it comes to their art and their creativity. So, you know, go ahead and be brave and give it a shot. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is that, you know, you break a few blades of grass. How awesome is this that I am using grass that's growing for free in my yard? I mean, I didn't even plant the seeds. As long as I get to it before the dog or the bunnies get to it, I've got free materials coming up and I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to do with this cordage. I have a couple of ideas. I can tell you that I figured out it takes me about an hour to make one yard of cordage. And I'm sure as I get faster with my splicing, <laughs> that will go a little bit better. So we're coming up to where there's gonna have to be a join and you will see I'm still, I'm still needing to get a little bit better at this part ready for another piece. I've got a narrow piece of grass there at one end, so I'm gonna bring the fatter end of the grass so that I'm overlapping, so I'm not overlapping two of the tips of the grasses. And I find that makes it a little bit stronger. And then it's just twist and you, know, you just have to kind of hold it carefully when you're doing the joins. And again, I just hope that the more I do this, I'm going to get better at it. It's just, it's really almost meditative to be working on this. It just um, makes you feel like you can just kind of zone out. And if I'm out in the yard and I'm just kind of trying a fiber out for the first time, I can just walk around without really even paying any attention to what I'm doing. If I don't have to do any joins, you can imagine if you had long pieces of yarn or thread that you were doing, you could get really fast at it. Here's what I have when I'm all done. I have got this marvelous, look at this, look at this, is this not wonderful? I had no idea this was going to turn out so great. I mean, really, I just, this is very, very tiny, I don't know if I can get this to focus any better on it. It is about the width of um, six strands of embroidery floss. On this so this is pretty good 
I'm not trying to, you know, tie something, tie a plant up or something. You would have to, you know, be careful, I guess, if you're trying to do something like that for strength. But there are ways you can get it stronger. You can take it and, let's see, I have one that's already done here. You can um, use, instead of just one strand of grass in each hand, you can do two strands of grass in each hand. That would mean, let's do it with some fresh stuff. Instead of making your cordage but keeping in mind I'm doing this with fresh stuff so it's not going to last but instead of just doing it like this with one and one you can take two pieces and you can start with two and just treat it as though it's one And see, so I've got two strands of grass here, two strands of grass here. And as you do that, you're going to get a much fatter piece of cordage compared to this. Okay, even though it hasn't shrunk up yet, you can tell it's going to be quite different, right? One of the other things you can do once you have a finished piece of cordage like this is you can treat it like you're starting over, okay? You can do it here since I have a really thin piece. Let's break that off, okay? So I've got, this is just one strand and one strand. I can twist it as though I'm starting another piece of cordage. I'm starting from scratch. And then I can have it twist on itself. So this is going to give you a much thicker piece of cordage than this. And you could do it again. You know, you could just keep folding it. So here's a piece that's already been done twice. Just imagine if you did it again and you did it again. Or you just did it with multiple. You know, instead of doing it with two, do it with four. You can, you can get, figure it out. You can also braid it. Just do the good old traditional braids. The biggest tip that I learned uh, just from doing a lot of this from a lot of different materials besides letting it dry out and then wetting it all over again, is to make sure that you move your finger down as you're doing it. Okay, so technique, I'm turning it away from me and over, away from me and over. Just keep moving your finger down so you're holding it tight. If you forget, you can probably keep doing this for a while, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna be very loose and you're not gonna get a, a tight um, cord that you're gonna be happy with. This is definitely something that I'm going to keep doing. I am just really addicted to this. I'm happy with the way my free grass growing in the yard has given me these materials to play with, and I've already got some ideas of things that I might be able to make with it. Of course, for me, it's not about tying up plants and using it to actually have a lot of strength. I want to use it in art. So if you have used any natural material made cordage, in your art, I'd like to hear about it. If you've made cordage like this before, let me know what's worked for you, what hasn't worked, any tips you have to share. And if you're looking forward to seeing more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.